Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello dear learners, I am Dr. Himani Singh working as an assistant professor with Institute of Business Management, GLA University, Mathura. I welcome you all to the session 15 of the course Professional Communication for Managers and session 15 is on communication with manners. By the end of this session, you will be able to understand different etiquettes which are dealing with how to handle a telephone when you are at business so that is more about telephonic etiquettes also how to exchange business card and to go on for making eye contact net etiquettes email etiquettes and so on so before that I just want to go on for telling you that what we mean by etiquettes although we have set the framework and the base for the business etiquettes in the previous session I am just going to go for a quick revision that what we mean by etiquettes. So etiquettes are conventional rules of social behavior as well as professional conduct. So they are the traditional behaviors or the traditional manners which you should follow when you are doing business, when you are dealing into the business activities. Yes, when we talk about um, business etiquettes, they are actually the unwritten rules, unwritten norms. You might not be finding that those rules, the traditional rules, they are in the written format and you can go and cross check them. No, might not be the possible case. They are actually unwritten rules. And people who do not follow this, they are known as loans, loners or headstrong people who do not comply with the business etiquettes. Yes, at the same time, when we talk about business etiquettes, they are quite self-rewarding. Why self-rewarding? Because when you think, when you see that yes, you are going with the manners or the etiquettes at your professional front, people tend to praise you, people tend to say that yes, that person is full of confidence, that person has good manners, that person shows good gestures. So that is somewhat self rewarding as well. Not only the outer receptors, with that you also feel good. So that becomes more of the self rewarding aspect. And not just this, in fact, business Manners vary from country to country, nation to nation, culture to culture. And just because of that, if you are not sensitive enough to understand the business manners of different areas, then you might be misinterpreted. You might be understood in the wrong manner. So if you want that you should be understand, you should be understood in the way in which you want it to, then you need to be sensitive enough to the business manners, to the business etiquettes. Now, I am going to start first with the telephone etiquettes. Why to know more about telephonic etiquettes? What's the reason? Because at your professional front, one or the other situation, you are going to either take up a call or you are going to make a call and you are discussing something with your client, customer, your business partners, your suppliers, your employees and so on. Now when you are having a conversation over telephone, then you really need to have certain basic manners. Many a times people are being misinterpreted because they do not convey the business manners, the business etiquettes which they should follow when using telephone. So to start with whenever, whenever you are making a call from your end or either you are receiving a call, make sure that your voice should be pleasant. 
it should be pleasant it should not like as if you are angry so the best rule for doing this is that when you are taking up a call or when you are making a call just receive the call or make a call with a small smile on your face because the moment that smile is going to be there your stress is going to be released and you will be speaking in a very appropriate tone so voice should be pleasant not just this remember one thing that you should not make a call at the odd hours people do believe that oh that's just a telephone that person can be nearby that telephone and i can make a call at any odd hour no a strict no if you know that business timings are from 9 to 5 9 am to 5 pm try not to make up a call at 5:15 or even 5:5 and try to avoid at 4:55 also if that thing is not that much urgent don't make calls to your business partners at the odd hours that's inappropriate except except that 24/7 services right if your company is coming up with that service it's okay you can make a call but again when it is about office hours you should stick to that until and unless it's not that much urgent if something is really urgent you cannot wait then yes you can go for it but again for that when you are making a call you should always start your conversation while apologizing you should apologize for making the call at the odd hour also when it is about making a call there are some people who have the tendency to ask oh can you please guess who am i sorry when it is about a business call it's a strict no strict no you should never go on asking that can you guess who am i that's not a business manner in fact when you start your conversation if you are making a call it becomes your responsibility to introduce yourself firmly to tell what is your name from where you are calling what is your designation what's your company name your affiliation that is it should not be like that can you guess or let the other person guess no with this always remember that you should take permission from the other side that madam can we talk for a while or i need 5 minute of yours to discuss whatsoever you want to discuss make sure when you are making a call do not ask the other person the person on the other side to make any guesses also be prepared with the content make sure that what is going to be your content why are you sending that con uh, content to the person who is the person concerned to whom this message needs to be delivered sometimes it happens that i am making a call and the receptionist or the assistant picks up the call but the information which i want to share it can only be shared with the ceo or the president or that manager right i cannot share that information with the receptionist or the assistant or the secretary anyone in that case you need to be very very clear that whether you can share the information or whether you cannot you will be if that person is not available you will be making a call again that you need to be clear with fine so every detail every detail about the content needs to be with you for example if you are making a call to invite some person for some of the event make sure you are clear with the dates with the timing with the venue with the purpose what is the event all about everything you need to be clear you cannot say oh that's an event of the organization i'll get back to you soon that why this event is being organized no you are inviting you are calling might be you are not the right person to tell all these things but you need to prepare because you are making a call 
also remember one thing that you should never put the second party on very long holds. If in case, if in case you are asking the other party to put on hold and that is a very genuine cause as well, genuine reason, genuine cause is there. In that case, you should close the call and you should ask or tell that person, okay, I will get back to you soon in another 5 or 10 minutes because uh, it is taking long time. So, like this, you should close the call and you should give the call again rather than making that person holding on for 5, 10, 15 minutes on the call. That is not a right practice. If in case the person wants some information and you want some more time to process that information, please ask that person that you will be giving the call again rather than putting that person on hold for a long time, right? Not just this, when you are making a call, make sure that throughout your conversation, in the initial, during the middle part, towards the end, be courteous, be courteous as much as you can. Why you need to be courteous? Because that is again a gesture which tends to create a good relationship with the person who is sitting on the other side of the call even if you are not meeting that person. That tends to convey positive feelings. It was nice talking to you if I am quoting this towards the end of my conversation. Thank you for taking out some time for me. These are some courteous phrases which you should always quote, right? Do not take too long to pick up any call. Normally, the call, the telephone is on your workstation, so please be around your workstation only. That is again a very wrong practice, very wrong manner to go for that when you are not picking up a call for too long. That is not good because you are at work and if your work is related to the telephone that you tend to receive phone calls very often, then in that case, you need to be even more cautious about taking up a call, right? Nowadays, yes, we are having more of the mobile phones or the cell phone. So, for that also holds true whatever I discussed in the telephonic etiquettes, but apart from that, we do have to be, we need to be somewhat more cautious when we are having our cell phones and we are operating our business activities through the cell phones. Make sure when you are sitting in some business meeting or business, you having a business meal, attending some conference, make sure that your cell phone should be on either vibration mode or silent mode preferably. Until and unless the call is not important. You should not take up the call when you are into some business meeting. You might be wondering that few minutes back only I said that you should not uh, make the other person ring so much and you should take up a call as early as you are receiving it. But see, you need to be again, you need to use your cognition. If you are in a business meeting with a business partner, then what is more important to you, that business or the, uh, the phone call which you are getting? So, if it is not important, please do not pick it up, right? Also, some people, they have the tendency to shout on the cell phone because either signals are not good from their end or signals are not good from the other person's end. See, if the signals are not good, even if you are going to shout, the person is not going to listen because that is the signal problem. People believe that when they are on the mobile phone, they should shout. No, even if you are not going to be audible, even if the signals are not working properly, then shout, <laughs> you will still not be audible, right? So, you should not shout when you are conversation when you are having when you are having a conversation over the telephone. Uh, also see that is an advantage that is a disadvantage also with the mobile phone that it can be taken anywhere right. But make sure 
that when you are having a conversation with your business partner through mobile phone, you should choose a spot which is quiet, right? So much of the noise is not around, so that you can understand, you can listen carefully what your business counterpart wants to tell you. So choose the spot very carefully that at which spot you are having no disturbances. With this, another thing is ringtones. Yes. When it is about selecting the ringtones, make sure if you are taking up your phone to the business meetings and it is on the ring mode, right? It is on the sound mode. So choose the ringtones which are quite subtle, quite calm, quite composed, uh, soothing kind of thing. It should not be too much loud music should be there, right? So I'm talking in terms of business. Apart from that in your personal life, whatever you want to go for that, you can. But when it is about business, then there you need to be careful. Also remember that keep business private. Now what happens with the mobile phone? As I said that it's an advantage as well as disadvantage that you can take mobile phone anywhere. Whether you are in a cafeteria or you are shopping around, wherever. Now when you are receiving a business call, fine. For example, you are shopping around, you are, you got a business call and you're picking up that call and you are discussing something confidential about your company and you forgot to look for the surroundings, right? And when you are not focusing on the surroundings, what will happen? Might be that some people, they are going to overhear the confidential things which you are discussing with some of the other person. So make sure that you should try to keep business in private so that it should not be overheard. See, these are some of the etiquettes which you should follow when you are having a conversation over telephone or through mobile phones. Now, moving further, I am going to highlight some of the etiquettes which you should follow when you are exchanging the business cards. Now, when I say exchanging business card, the very first thing talks about, uh, see, yes, if we go with the nation, the culture, Japanese, they it seems to be more very much particular about handling business cards, whereas Americans are not that much. But again, if I talk about around the world, there are some common ways of exchanging business card which you should follow, irrespective of the nation from which you are, right? Uh, the very first thing is how you're going to present a business card. There are two ways, either you are going to present a business card by holding from one end of the tip with your dominant hand, with the right hand. Or the most important or better way is that you should present your business card when you are holding it from the side tip and you should present it with a small bow and both the hands. That is what is presenting a business card. Now when it is about receiving that card, some people tend to receive the card like this. No. It should be that you should receive the card from both the hands. And remember, when you are presenting the card, the written part should be readable from the receiver's end. So that when he is receiving, that person can read it. Fine. So that is one very important way of how you present and how you receive the card. That is very, very important. Now, certain times what happens that... Um, for example, on my card, on my business card, my mobile number is changed or I have some other mobile number. So when I presented my card to the receiver, the receiver received it and uh, that receiver said, started writing on my card, my new number. That's a wrong way, wrong way. Always remember that you should never take any notes on anyone's card. If in case, Still, that thing is very, very, very important. You should always seek permission from the person whose card you are holding and whose card you are uh, writing. See, in Japanese, uh, it is taken as a very wrong thing. Why? Because uh, if you are writing on anyone's business card, it is taken as if you are writing on his or her face. 
so that is again not good so but still in other cultures if you really want and it is really uh, required so you should in that case you should take permission from the person whose card on whose card you want to write fine also how you are going to handle business card handling business card now when it is about handling the moment you receive it where are you going to keep it that's a big question some of the people what they'll do that uh, they'll be just taking their wallet out from the back pocket and then they'll be keeping it in that wallet again they'll be keeping the back pocket of the wallet into their back pocket that's a wrong way of handling a business card of other people always remember that whenever you receive a card you should if you are keeping it in your pockets right you should always keep a card in the pockets which are placed in the above waist region it should not be below the waist region right apart from this yes the more best way the more appropriate way is to keep the card in the card case always carry a card case with you that is very very important right and keep that card in the card case and again keep that card case in the most important position uh, places again not in any of the pocket which is placed below your belt region right that is how you should go on for handling the business card if in case uh, you missed anyone's card it doesn't looks good asking again and again that person the card so the best way is the moment you receive the card you should make some uh, file of it wherein you can mention the names so that you should not miss his or her business card fine apart from this yes local language uh, when we talk about uh, some of the areas i am going to do business i am going to france and uh, there and i know that uh, french is more common so my idea should be like that one side of the card should be printed in english and the other side of the card should be printed in the native language whatever is the native language of that particular place because i should be considerate enough i should consider that with which audience i am going to deal with that audience is comfortable reading my preferred language or i should go on for two languages one is my preferred and the other side it should be the local language of that area that is again a very very good idea to connect with the people because see your business card is actually a branding tool for you wherever you cannot reach but your business card can you might be sitting in the one corner of the world and your business card might reach to the other corner of that world so make sure that you should be more sensitive while looking for the layout also or the language also when i say layout yes you need to look for proper font size proper font style how to place the things where should be your name your designation everything you need to be very particular because that is your professional business card that's your business card it's not any xyz card so it needs to be formally drafted fine now i am going to talk about some of the countries that how business card norms varies see be very very sensitive to all the different countries how they handle business card if you believe that your way of handling business card is again the best one so no you are not on the right track you should know that what are the different ways in which business card is being handled as per the country i'll just take small small examples if i talk about japan right uh wherever it is about sharing the business card they are very particular about it they start with the in the hierarchical order they'll start with the senior and then they'll go to the junior they'll never start giving their business card to the junior first and then to the senior never right if i talk about japanese they 
are very very particular in handling, receiving, taking the business card. They will always present the business card by both the hands and they will take the card by both the hands. right? So, this is how Jap Japanese tends to differ when it is about talking into business card. They treat business card as religion, as religion. And uh, if you are eating meals at that time, you should never share a business card with any of the Japanese person. Because again, they believe that disrespect is being shown to the business card. If you are either you are having the meal or the other person is having meal and at that time you are exchanging business card. That is again a very negative aspect when it is about exchange of business card. Now Chinese are also somewhat similar when it comes about handling business cards uh, to the Japanese only. right? And uh, when it is about Chinese, uh, one more aspect which I would like to add upon here is that they want that their business cards should be printed in golden ink because as per their customs, they believe that if it is going to be printed in golden ink, that brings good luck to us. So again, if you are going and doing business with the Chinese people, get your uh, business cards printed into golden ink that is going to help you out help you out in what in just establishing a good rapport with the chinese business counterpart right so apart from that yes they are also quite particular about their business cards they also treat them as religion and uh, also with chinese you can go on for getting one side of the business card printed in english and the other side should be in the chinese language that is more preferred. Moving forward, Americans. Now, Americans differ from Japanese in one way that Americans do not start a meeting or a conversation by exchanging of business card, whereas Japanese do this. Americans are going to exchange business cards only in when they feel like that, okay, after the conversation, I would like to do business with this person. And if I am interested in doing business with that person, then only I am going to go for exchanging business card. Otherwise, I will refrain myself from exchanging business card. Right? Is it okay? Now, moving forward is about India. See, uh, yes, in India, you will be finding that business cards are being exchanged in non-business activities also with non-business people. You tend to use your business card as just a, a form of information which you want to communicate to the other person. So it can be used for non-business activities as well. Uh, apart from this, if I talk about Arabic people, uh, particularly South Arabic or uh, Kuwait or such places, you will be finding that they tend to distribute their business card to everyone, to everyone in the room, irrespective of their cadre, irrespective of their hierarchy, they don't focus on that. With this, one more thing, if I talk about Iranian people or Iran culture, they tend to exchange or they tend to it is like that only the senior people tends to exchange business card. Junior people never exchange business cards. So that shows your seniority or uh, what is the status you share with the other person. If I talk about Hungary, right? In Hungary, uh, on the other side of the card, wherein you are using the native language, and when it is about native language, your name should start from your second name and then your first name should come. Contrary to the part wherein you, uh, for example, one side of the part is in the English and other side of the part is in some local language. So when it is in local language, then you need to get it printed, your name should be printed, your second name should come first and then your first name should come. Apart from this, if I talk about Spain and Turkey, therein you will be finding that when you are 
going to meet someone and in fact uh, you are initially meeting or telling the receptionist about your meeting. So, there itself you need to give your card to the receptionist. So, there uh, you need to present your card to receptionist as well, right. So, see these are some of the ways. Now, again my suggestion is that wherever you are going to any of the different nation, research about that, that how they handle business cards so that you should not be interpreted in the wrong manner. Now, moving further, I am going to talk about eye contact. Yes, how and when, that is quite important thing, how and when to make eye contact depends entirely on the customs of where you are, who you are with and what is the social setting. So, eye contact also tends to communicate a lot. Remember we studied uh, this in the non-verbal communication part that eye contact is again a major Im um, impacting thing, a very important thing when it is about communication. But again, when it is about eye contact, it can be interpreted differently in different social settings. You cannot just go and uh, go for some kind of eye contact which is applicable everywhere. No, if I am going to talk about right eye contact, yes, you should know the difference that what is the difference between good eye contact and staring that each one of us know. When uh, you are looking at someone without even smiling and thinking, what is that? That is not a good eye contact. You are just looking, you might be staring, that becomes more of the staring and it conveys that you are having some aggressive intentions towards the other person. So, like this, you need to understand that what is good eye contact, what is right eye contact. Again, looking continuously into the eyes of the other person is not appropriate eye contact. You should with your gestures, with your eyeball movement, you should have a good one. Now, when I say that eye contact tends to be interpreted differently in different social settings, I really mean it. For example, if I talk about US and European countries, right, therein irrespective of your age, irrespective of your gender. If you are looking into the eyes of the other person, it shows that you are confident, you are clear with your thoughts, right. A small child of 10 years of age, if he is looking into the eyes of a 70 year old person, that is taken as fine. That conveys that, okay, they are having a good conversation. Even a boy of 20 years is looking into the eyes of a girl who is just 18 years. It is again positive that they both are quite confident about their conversation. They trust each other. Whereas, if I talk about somewhat Asian countries, African, Latin American countries, the similar eye contact is based upon age, gender. A small child should never look into the eyes of the elders because that shows disrespect to them. And if a small child, um, a person who is younger is not making eye contact with the elder person, in fact that is interpreted fine, in fact that shows that you are respecting that person, right. Uh, so similarly, if I talk about gender. In Indian culture, we do not prefer going on for having a looking into the eyes of the opposite gender because that is again not appropriate. That conveys some wrong intentions many a time. So, this is how you need to understand that how you should go on for having the appropriate eye contact so that you should not be misinterpreted. Now, moving further, I am going to focus upon net etiquette. Now, net etiquette is basically managing one's conduct when going online. How you are going to manage your conduct when you are online, right? That is what you need to make sure, you need to understand that how you will be conducting yourself because again present situation, present context or present uh, scenario is of online. And we are into that much technology that we are using this online space too much. 
So you need to know that how to use it. Uh, when we talk about net etiquettes, remember one thing that when you are dealing with people online, you are dealing with humans, you are not dealing with machines. But we tend to believe as if we are dealing with machines. That is wrong. Many a times what happens, we cannot say anything, we cannot say something to the person when I am meeting that person, but the moment it is online, I am posting it. Because I believe that the person is not in front of me, he cannot hit me, he cannot uh, harm me, so, so now let's do it. So make sure that uh, adhere to similar standards of behavior which you are going to follow when you are not going online. Just make sure that your behavior is not changing. It is same. The moment it is going to be similar to your real life behavior, you will not hurt anyone. You will not write in this unnecessary things which are not required for the company, for the people, for the customers and so on. That is what you need to be very sure of. Also, you should know where you are in the cyberspace. Certain times you tend to post wrong things on the wrong platforms. When you are dealing with this, be very, very sure that what you are posting. You might end up posting some of your personal message on your official, uh, through your official email. So that's incorrect way. So make sure what you are posting. If you are posting any information about the organization, is it correct? Am I posting it on the right website or right site or right platform? So you should know your cyberspace, that what's your cyberspace. Also respect time, which most of us tend to forget. We believe, oh, online, it's 24 seven. No. If I'm shooting a mail uh, somewhere midnight and I'm expecting that my employee should reply me back, sorry, that's the wrong thing, what I'm expecting. If I'm believing that my employee is not having manners, sorry, I'm on the wrong track. In fact, I am not having those particular manners because I'm not respecting time of the other person. So if you are shooting any mail or any message through online platforms and you are expecting the immediate response without respecting the other person's time, then it's incorrect. That's not as per the business manners and you need to be very, very careful with this. Online meetings is a trend these days, right? Because again, we are into a situation wherein virtual platforms are more used these days due to some, again, not favored conditions. So whenever you are online, make yourself that you appear good. You should look good. It should not be that you are attending meeting from your home and you are just sitting and attending that meeting with a loose t-shirt or some uh, baggy hairs where you are not nicely prepared your hairs and all such things. No. When you are even on the virtual platforms, attending meetings, conferences through online at that time also, make sure that you are looking good. You are looking smart. Also, uh, when it is about uh, organizational websites or other platforms, social networking sites, which organization is using for connecting with the customers or other stakeholders, make sure that you are updating the online information. Frequent updation is required. Most of the time what happens is the organization, they have prepared their website, they have prepared the, their social networks uh, and now they are not updating it. So that in fact creates a bad impression, fine. If I am going to the website of some organization and the last they updated was four or five years back, it gives me again a negative impression about that organization, that they are not conscious about the customers which they can get through online medium, fine. Apart from that, respond to emails promptly. Yes, if it is within the timeline, if the other person is respecting that time, that does not mean that today you have received the received an email and you are replying it back after one week. 
of course you need to categorize the things Ki, okay you are getting an email with your closed working group you need to revert back in this much hour if it is distant working group like this you can always segregate i am not denying to this fact but you should have some process of responding it back it should not be that the mail is there in from last one month in your inbox and you are not replying back to the people right not just this in fact always remember to check your facts and figures before posting because people are highly active they can easily make comparisons also at the same time don't abuse your power that means don't misuse your power if you are the part of the technical team who is handling all such networking uh, things in the organization don't misuse your power for breaching the privacy policies of your people right and also you should know that which online communication tool should be used at what time for example if you want to share some uh, very big message very lengthy message uh, which talks about change in the rules and regulations of the organization if you are sharing that message through a whatsapp media or through somewhere text message is not a right idea you should go on for email kind of thing so my idea of conversation here is that you should know that which online communication tool should be used at what time fine uh, moving ahead i will be talking about email etiquettes yes as uh, it is very much connected to the net etiquettes that you are using one online communication tool and that's email and that is one of the most preferred tool which we tend to use as business managers so you as business managers should know that what are the etiquettes what are the basic etiquettes which you should follow the very first one is how to write an email drafting see dear learners i discussed this drafting aspect in the previous session where i was talking about writing business letters so somewhere the drafting is almost on the similar pattern it is just that uh, the email should not be too bulky the kind of words phrases conciseness correctness completeness all such principles needs to be intact in the email writing also yes don't forget to attach a signature file towards the end of your email wherein you should mention your name preferably as well as your uh, designation your company name and your contact number right that is again a more preferred way of doing that also when we send attachments you need to be very cautious why i am saying this because when sending attachments make sure that the attachments is are not too big and also in a mail you should maximum go for two attachments until and unless it is very necessary very necessary right so sending attachments how you need to send attachments that is also a concerning issue which you should look into how to use subject file that subject needs to be a small one not in caps lock not in capital letters because when you write subject in capital letters it signifies anger so never go not in capital letters also try to make it as brief as possible so that it can indicate that what the message is all about right apart from this using the from field make sure that your a uh, professional name your business name is being appearing on the from field and also how to use cc field carbon copy right now if you want that a mail should be sent a mail which you want to send to the other people it is concerned with all those people right i want to send the progress report of my employee to my senior manager so i'll be putting to senior manager and what i can do is i can add into the cc uh, about some of the other top management who need not to reply back on this mail but i just want to be to make sure that they are in the loop they are not out of the loop apart from this when we talked about using bcc that's blind carbon copy 
Now in BCC we can put those people wherein we believe that uh, the email IDs should not be shared with each and every person or if I am going to send put all, all those people in the two, uh, they might not be liking it because they do not want to share that uh, their information, their email with the other person. So I can use the BCC field because it, in that the whosoever is receiving the mail, he or she cannot look that who are the other receivers, fine. Using reply option, again in this also you need to be very wise enough to understand how to use reply option. For example, uh, you received an email one month, one month back. Now uh, you need to interact with the same person but on some other issue, not on that one month back issue, this is some new issue. And if you are using the reply option and it is not advisable, you should draft a new mail now because both the issues are very different, they are not at all interconnected, right. Similarly, when it is about reply all option, you need to be very cautious. Most of the time when we get some emails, right, wherein receivers are too many and uh, we tend to reply, we wanted to reply to the sender, but we tend to select the reply all option. So it is going to be replied or it is going to be the mail is, the mail is going to be showed to all the people who were into the two field, right. Email response time, yes, as I said that you can go on for segregating, make certain segregations that if it is from my in-group or my team, I need to reply in this much hours, but please your response time should be appropriate. It should not be like that your, um, an email is lying in your inbox from last one month and you are not responding back. No, that is not the correct way. Now again one more thing that is what you need to be very cautious with the forwarding emails. If you are forwarding an email also, make sure that you are writing some lines so that the other person can get to know that what that email is all about. If you are, you should also go on changing the subject line. Most of the time people tend to forward like that only, no, that is not the appropriate etiquette to be followed, fine. I hope you are able to understand all such things. With this, I also want to highlight on few more points into the email etiquette that is using out of office replies. For example, you are not at work for next 5 days. You can go for this auto generated mail wherein you can inform the other people that I am not available from this time to this time, so I will not be able to respond you back. So that the sender can get to know that okay, my mails are not going to be responded by this particular time. And in the subject field, you should use subject as out of office kind of line, which you can, which is going to directly tell that what it is all about. Also using mobile accounts, make sure that you are adding signatures there. Because many a times we tend to miss that aspect and yes, with the email, you should know when to pick up the phone. That means if you have received an email with 5, 6 different queries and you are not able to understand that what the sender really wants from you. So rather than just writing an email again, you can simplify things and you can make a call directly to that person. Because again asking clarification for 5, 6, 10 points that might be a cumbersome task. It is better to get clarity through a telephone call. So that is what you can do. So these are some of the email etiquettes which you as a business manager should always follow. With this, I also want to highlight some of the desk etiquettes. Yes, your workstation. There is a code of conduct to manage your workstation also. Make sure that your workstation is neat and clean. Things are not, files are not piling up. If they are, then you need to find some good space for them. It should not be haphazard, it should not be in the haphazard manner. If you are having a telephone connected to your workstation, make sure that you are having a small notepad and a pen attached to it. When you are sitting in your workstation, make sure you are not peeping onto other person's workstation. That is again not appropriate way. 
Not just this, in fact, if you are taking up a call at your workstation, make sure you are having a conversation in less volume. Your volume should not be very high, that people are just getting disturbed around your workstation. So, and when it is about uh, eating and drinking coffee, eating food, yes, it is again advisable that you should not do all such things at your workstation. You should go to the dining hall of the organization or the dining room whatsoever or the cafeteria, whatever they are having at their workplace and therein you should sit and eat because you might be spoiling or ruining some of the good pages, some of the important pages of your workplace by staining them with food or coffee or something else. So yes, these are some of the desk etiquettes which you should follow upon. Not just this, in fact, you need to work upon your personal grooming, how you look alike. Uh, some uh, of the procedures we discuss in the nonverbal communication, so just a more comprehensive one wherein you should know that uh, how you should appear because that is going to create an immediate impact on the other person. So that is one way you should be very clear with. Yes, for women as well as for men, we do have different ways that how they need to carry. If it is about attire, make sure that you are minimizing the usage of accessories and whatever attire you are wearing that should be of solid colors. It should not be flowery, it should not be showy, it should not be uh, too much of the informal way and uh, when you are going at your workplace, make sure your handbag, it is matching with your coat, all such basic things you need to take care. Your hairs are nicely done, your, uh, the boys, they should be nicely groomed, not only the boys, all the, girl, the women as well as the men, they both should be nicely groomed because through this, they can create first impression on the other person. So you should look professional as well as smart. Also with this, yes, we do have business body language, how you stand, how you sit. If you sit with the shrugged shoulders, uh, with the hands like this on your, on your head, when you are sitting in a meeting, that shows negativity. That shows that you are not interested in the speaker. So how you stand, how you sit, how you use your hands. Now, here in India, when we do this, this shows that, oh, I'm happy, this is victory sign. But in Australia, this is not a right sign to be used. So you need to be very, very careful with this, that what kind of gestures you are using. If I talk about thumbs up sign, it sh signifies that, yes, I have done this, but in Iran, this is again interpreted in the wrong manner. So whatever gestures you are using, you need to be very, very careful with that, that whether it matches my business setting or not. Not just this, in fact, your facial expressions, your head movement, how are you going to move your head? All such things makes an important aspect when it is about your body language because everyone around you is also reading things from your body language, analyzing you out of your body language. Although we have discussed this also in the nonverbal communication part. So dear learners, I hope you are able to understand that what are the different etiquettes, different business manners we should follow upon. Because as the nation changes, as I said, that the victory sign is good in India, it means victory, but in some other nation, it is not an appropriate sign. So you need to be very, very cautious, very, very uh, understandable person, very sensitive when it comes to dealing with people at workplace. You need to match up your somewhere, if I say manners or etiquette with the other people. When we talk about telephonic etiquettes, yes, you need to be very clear that when to say hello, when to say bye, how to say it, not only when, not only what, that is what, how to say it also. Because again, the way you are going to say, it is going to represent you as well as your organization. 
why customer executives people who are dealing with the customers over telephone they are being trained so much why to give such training to them because they are not only conveying their personality through the te telephonic calls they are also conveying the personality of the organization so how you talk over the telephone that depends that how you are going to make an impact over the other person and not just in this session i have covered about the telephonic etiquettes i have also covered that how to exchange business card what kind of eye contact you should make in which setting also i discussed about the business card etiquettes with that net etiquettes email etiquettes and what should be your desk etiquettes how you should manage your workstation with this i also talked about the personal grooming as well as your business body language the moment you are going to be very sensitive to all these different etiquettes trust me you are going to become a successful leader in your organization so for getting success you really need to understand and you need to become more sensitive towards different business etiquettes so dear learners i hope you enjoyed the session thank you and happy learning Thank you.